Every day, more than $3 trillion worth of transactions are handled by a 65-year-old programming language. Major systems from banking, insurance, and government depend on this programming language, which is one big dark horse. It's called COBOL, and hardly anyone speaks about it or even knows how to use it, and the entire story behind COBOL. It's pretty cool. The year was 1959, and computers at that time were actually the opposite of this. They were huge, clunky, and not very functional. But even more interesting, the programming languages at that time had two issues. The first issue was that they just weren't portable. Computer programs in 1959 were actually written in machine code or assembler, and they had to be rewritten for each new computer. Now there were, in fact, other programming languages that were portable at the time, like Fortran. However, these were all science-based, and they used quite a lot of mathematical symbols, so it became hard to read. And the second issue with programming languages back in the day was the cost. Programming was costly. There was a survey done in 1959, and it found out that any data processing that needed to be implemented, the programming costs totaled $800,000 or more. And if you wanted to make existing programs run on new hardware, well, that would set you back $600,000. So a computer programmer named Mary Kay Howes, excuse the pronunciation, she was really tired of these high programming costs and really complicated programming languages. So she held a meeting with some important people. And in that meeting, they asked the United States Department of Defense, the DUD, to sponsor a project to create a common business language. And you might ask, well, why on earth was the Department of Defense even in that meeting? Why were they interested? Well, before I answer these questions, if you've been following me, you already know that I love breaking down complex tech concepts into simple, actionable steps. But today, I'm taking things to the next level and start a new journey with just 19 people. I'm excited to introduce these all in one package, a complete guide designed to help you master the essential skills every developer needs need to know. Whether you're just starting out or looking to sharpen your expertise, this package has everything in one package for just for my viewers. But I have a problem. Problem. I will close the offer immediately. I hit the total number of people I need to start this journey. Here's what I package there. For web development, you learn how to build interactive websites using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and powerful frameworks. For backend and APIs, understand how to create scalable server-side applications with PHP, Laravel, and more. And for mobile app development, you explore Flutter and build cross-platform apps with a seamless user experience. For cybersecurity and ethical hacking, you enhance your security knowledge and learn how to think like a hacker. For database management, you master SQL, NoSQL, and database optimization for handling real-world applications. For freelancing and monetization, you, not just coding, I'll show you how to turn your skills into a profitable career. This isn't just another coding course. It's a roadmap to real-world success. Whether you want to build your own projects, land high-paying gigs, or start your own tech business, I've got you covered. So if you're serious about leveling up your coding game, make sure to check out the course. Let's get started and turn your coding skills into something big. Big. Now, the answer to your question is that even Department of Defense was also tired of the state of programming languages at the time. They were pumping money into their tech. At the time, the Department of Defense actually had 125 computers with more on order, and they had spent almost $200 million on implementing programs to actually run on them. So they formed a committee, and they sponsored the project. And the goal of the project was to create a common programming language for business, almost one programming language to rule them all. So the committee wanted to develop a programming language, and they wanted this programming language to be different. They wanted this language to have three main features. Feature number one is that the language should be easy to use and work in a wide variety of environments, from banking to governments to insurance to healthcare. Feature number two is that the language should be designed to handle huge amounts of data on a large scale. And feature number three, probably the most important feature, they wanted a language where the syntax was made to resemble everyday English. And this would make it much easier for non-specialists to understand the language and start learning it. And this was revolutionary at the time. To give you an example, here is a code snippet of C-O-B-O-L. And immediately you can see how this almost looks like an English sentence, which is weirdly formatted for comparison. This script on Python would look like this. And with those three features, COBOL was born. So the timeline here was that COBOL was developed in 1959. By the mid-60s, COBOL was widely used by many major institutions. And by 1970, COBOL had become the most widely used programming language of that time. And it was designed to handle large amounts of data at a large scale. Scale. So back in the day, it was perfect to handle massive systems like your financial records and transactions. And with that, it became really popular in banking and insurance. So popular that even in 2024, COBOL is still being used in banking and finance. According to Reuters, 43% of banking systems are built on COBOL. 80% of in-person transactions use COBOL. And a whopping 95% of ATM swipes rely on COBOL. And it's not only present in the finance industry. According to some blogs, more than 60% of records
records and databases in the U.S. healthcare system are COBOL-based, which leads to the next point. Any business that is currently using COBOL today is actually doing so because they don't have any other choice. You'll notice that many companies that use COBOL are old, large-scale corporations, banks, the IRS, insurance companies. These aren't small businesses. So let's imagine a scenario. Let's say you're a Python developer and you work for a bank. The bank is old. It's been there for a while, like most banks. And because the bank is old, all of their business processes are on COBOL. Obviously, when the company started developing these systems back in the day, COBOL was the number one programming language to use. And now when you look at the bank processes, you find similar processes and millions and millions of lines of COBOL. So as the new Python developer, you just need to change 10,000 lines of COBOL into the corresponding Python code. However, all of these 10,000 lines of COBOL are for a bank. So you'll be working with transactions, calculations for fees, and interest loan formulas. And if you get this wrong, if you write this incorrectly, your mistake could cost a lot of money. And the bank probably just doesn't want to take that risk. The other issue is, if you think about coding etiquette, back in the day, there probably wasn't much. So those millions and millions of lines of COBOL that belong to the bank, they probably aren't 100% documented. I mean, how many new companies do you know today with processes that still aren't documented? And not to mention that the software engineers who actually developed the processes and wrote the code, chances are they're retired, or they're probably. And because of this, it actually makes sense that banks and large corporations would be so reluctant to actually make this change from COBOL to a new programming language, and these corporations would need to make sure that the people responsible for maintaining and upscaling the COBOL code are really experienced and don't make mistakes. So who actually works on COBOL now, since it's a language that is not too popular or too trendy? According to the latest stats, the average COBOL developer is around 45 to 55 years old. And like I said, COBOL just isn't a popular language today. In fact, many people used to criticize it quite badly. Often, COBOL is considered a language that is very difficult to learn and maintain. But to be honest, I don't know why it gets a lot of hate. It's an old language, and yes, it does have its disadvantages, but it's been doing pretty well while I was doing my research. A lot of COBOL developers actually disagree with COBOL being hard. They say it's just the archaic systems and processes that actually make it hard and not the language itself. This was in the experience dev subreddit someone asked, who is replacing the COBOL developers who are retiring or dying? And one person posted, what I found is that if you can pick up Python, you can certainly pick up COBOL very quickly. Where things get fun is when trying to learn other things which are needed on mainframes such as JCL, IMS, and DB2. Another poster said a co-worker gave me a 30-minute run-through of how it works and how to use the basics of tooling, and that was about it. The language is dead simple. It took a couple of months to get proficient, but there's not much to it. And to be honest, I am not surprised. I have a chemical engineering degree, and a lot of the chemical engineering applications use Fortran as as a programming language, which is another old programming language, and it's actually not a bad language to pick up. It's pretty simple and straightforward. When I was learning it at the time, I was definitely younger and a lot more inexperienced, and I was able to pick it up pretty simply. So it does seem like COBOL isn't that bad to learn. It's probably just outdated, and the processes surrounding COBOL are complex because, well, the companies are complex. I think COBOL is here to stay, and I'm actually glad I did this video because I learned a lot about the language. Legacy applications belonging to large-scale companies still have to use COBOL because they just have no choice. Changing systems would probably be too risky and too expensive. And COBOL is still a safe and secure programming language. I do think that the popularity of COBOL would decline as more and more companies try to move over to something different. But they'll do so slowly and carefully, which makes sense. Why would they move? Well, COBOL is still a very niche language, a lot of limited libraries. It hasn't really evolved to support something like graphical user interfaces or a big one, machine learning and artificial intelligence. So that may be the reason in the coming future where companies would want to eventually change. But either way, I think COBOL is a really cool language. It is pretty awesome to see such an old language still living its own life in one of the most competitive industries. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next one and bye for now.